So you want to build a retaining wall. Your choices are endless, but with Adbri, we've got some good news for you. They've got a dry stack system that goes together as simple as one, two, three. Why do we need retaining walls? Well, this is a classic example. You've got all the land, but it's unusable because of the slope. You've got a bit of soil erosion going on here, and that's a negative for the environment. Plus, they look fantastic. So we're gonna put one in here, reclaim the land, which will be a perfect garden bed. And the retaining walls work really well as raised garden beds on their own. So you're not bending over to garden. But where do you start? Well, you start at the ground and work up. So the first thing you need to do is mark out where your retaining wall is going to be so you can dig your footing. I've got this existing concrete slab here and this is the most important corner that you're going to see when you drive in. So I'm going to start here. If I work off that 90 degrees, I'll go back that way and 90 degrees this way. I'm going to do about three metres dead straight. So I'll mark that point out. I can join the dots later. And then I'm going to curve it back to that post there because with the dry stack walls, you can put curves in. There's a couple of ways you can do the curve. If you trust your eye, you can do it by hand. But if you ever tried to draw a circle, it's pretty hard. Grab a hose, a rope, or a piece of conduit, lay it out, stand back, look at it, and then just follow the line of it. Now I've got a little cheat note for you. It's something you do as a tradesman. I've got my point there and I've got my point here. I can go and set up the string line that's gonna take me five minutes, or I can just side it. They're in a line, make some dots, and it's as simple as connecting them. Now that line represents the face of my wall. So in other words, it'll come from here up that way. With the footing underneath, I need it to be wide enough to pick up that plate compactor. So I need to go in front of the wall and behind the wall. So simply just tracing about 150 mil in front of that line, will mean my footings will come forward, the wall sits in the middle, and that's the strongest position it could possibly be in. The next step is to impersonate a council worker and lean on the shovel because there's no dig, dig, dig before you ring, die before you dig. And when you dig, don't go crazy. Just ease yourself into it. Get a touch feel. When building walls that require a step up like this one, you'll need to identify the step up point. This is determined by the slope of the land. To do this, you'll have to excavate along the trench until your step up height is equal to the depth of your footing plus about one and a half block. We do all this to ensure that when you step up, you still have half a block buried and keyed in, adding strength to your wall. All right, so I've done the excavation for the footing and we're gonna start building that footing up. First, I'm gonna put in about 150 mil of road base and hit it with a whacker. That'll push it down a little bit and compress it to about 130. Then I'm gonna go over the top a little bit like icing a cake with a really weak mix of sand and cement. About eight to one or 10 to one's fine. That way you can trowel it off and get it dead flat. The perfect footing to lay your first block. Now that first block will still be a little bit into the ground, about half of the block. It looks really good because it's keyed into the earth and it's structurally strong. So making sure you can't see any of the footings doesn't just mean your wall's gonna look better, it's gonna be stronger. Now as far as your mix goes, what I do and what every brickie would do is mix the sand and cement dry. It's a lot easier, just like mixing a cake to get all the ingredients mixed through before you add the water. And if you look at it, it's pretty dry. It's more damp than wet. That means I can float it off and get a nice level pad. Now what I'm doing here is just making a track that's dead level. I can work off that with a metal float without disturbing that track. Just cutting into the sand and cement like a knife would cut into butter. Woohoo! time to start laying blocks. Now I'm gonna start in this corner here for a couple of reasons. I've got something to line it up to, but it's the most visible spot. It's where you use this driveway and walk down the street and you see this the most often. Now I'm gonna lay another block here and a block here and check it for square. If you start square, you'll finish square. 
What I like about the Versa wall is you don't have to butter the bricks up or the blocks up and worry about carrying a block that's got mud on it. They slide in, and if they're in these grooves, they're in the right spot. But when you look at the standard Versa wall, you can see that it's got these eight lugs on it. What you need to do is remove the first two so the right corner can sit over the top. As you go up, you need to remove those first two on every block that's nearest the corner. Now you can see here, I'm only about four blocks before I need to step up. So there's no use in setting up a string line. I could use a level or a straight edge to get it exactly right. Anything more than a couple of meters, you definitely need to get a string line. There's no other way to get it super accurate. Fill up each course as I go with blue metal. Not row base, but blue metal. Blue metal doesn't have any small aggregates, so it's free draining. If water does get in there, it'll go down to the base before it wants to come out the face of your wall. Don't go too high. If you do, grab yourself your little broom and give it a really good clean because a pebble underneath your next block is gonna drive you nuts. And if any falls out the back, it doesn't matter. It's just a little bit more drainage. A nag pipe's not a necessity, but it is another guarantee that you're gonna have no problem with drainage. I've got a bed here of blue metal. I'm sitting that down. Now these guys have a bit of a mind of their own. So if you can get a couple of shovels in there, you might need an extra set of hands to stop it moving around, or you can pick up a block, weigh it down, cover it, and then take the block away. Now for my second course, I've got my right hand corner, the little lugs have been knocked off, and we're ready to go. And it's as simple as that. You can repeat the process. There's nothing more to learn except infill, backfill. Infill, backfill. As you go up with your wall, infill first, backfill behind it later. The infill will hold it in place and the backfill will help you with the drainage issues. Now you know I love VersaWall. And doesn't it look smart when you see it like this? The best thing about it, if you can lift a block, you can make this wall. It's that simple. But did you know you can make curves with it, whether you want to go out or go in, concave or convex. If you're going out, you just start laying the blocks and you leave a small gap at the back. If you're going in, what you need to do is grab yourself a lumpy and knock off the back right hand corner and do that for the whole course as you're creating the curve. Now you can't be too ambitious because then the next course will sit and hang over the top of it and it won't look very nice. But if it's a nice gentle curve, it looks a million bucks. For the next course up, instead of chopping off the right hand side, I'm gonna turn it over and knock off the left hand side. And the reason why is it staggers those little holes at the back. Even though no one's gonna see them, it also helps with keying my blocks in, so you don't have massive hangovers. And I don't know anyone who likes a hangover. So construction's done, we've just gotta put the capping stone on the top. Now at the moment, we've used no adhesive whatsoever. It's gravity that's holding it in place. But the capping stone, we're gonna glue that down and put it into place. Remember these lugs? The lugs that made it so easy to put the blocks down because they could only go in the one spot? Well, for the last course, we need to knock them off. Now I'm just gonna use a scutch hammer. That's a little scutch in there. You can replace them when they wear out. Make sure you put glasses on because when you hit it, there's a potential for it to fly up. Give it a little sweep off so you've got no little tiny pebbles or particles for your capping to wobble on. 
and we're ready to go. Now, like I said when I started, I started in this corner because it's the most important point. As far as the header goes, it's exactly the same. I've cut two down to create a 45, so it looks like I've got a full on the corner. And what I like to do is lay a few out dry. They've got lugs on the bottom of them as well, so they can only sit in one place. They do have a face. All right, I've got two there. That's in the way. Move that around. Yep, I'll put the first two stones in the right spot so I can get started. I'm gonna glue these two first and then work away from there. You don't have to go overboard on the glue. What I do recommend is you do even blobs. The reason why, you end up with a nice flat top cap. If you had big chunks at this end and little ones at that end, you'd end up looking like that. After you've laid a few, you don't have to lay them out dry like I did. I just like to do it on the corner to get started. And then it's just a free for all. Well look at that, doesn't it look smart? And if you follow the simple steps, it's dead easy. I reckon it's a great weekend project for any DIYer. With Adbri, you can build a retaining wall this weekend.